Nicotine's not going away anytime soon. People are using it more than ever, and health conscious people are using it, and people that would never ever in their wildest dreams in a million years think about smoking, but they're using nicotine. And I think we need to understand how nicotine works when it comes to creating energy in the body, how it works even for fat loss, and how it works for focus and why people are taking it. And, and trust me, I will definitely take an unbiased approach on this and talk about the pros and cons. So let's talk about, first of all, it's just an alkaloid that is derived usually from nightshades. So what's interesting about nicotine is it is both a stimulant and an anxiolytic at the same time, which means it can bring on focus and, and get you jacked up but it's also an anxiolytic meaning it kind of makes you feel calmer and cooler which is why you know people use it for that focus not the case of cigarettes cigarettes have all kinds of different components in them right although cigarettes have nicotine it's not even fair to compare them however we do need to also look at the realistic aspects of nicotine in a negative light too right there's potential for hyperinsulinemia potential for metabolic issues so there's some caveats there so how does nicotine actually affect the body let's dive into this after today's video i put a link down below for my my favorite collagen which is Bubs Naturals Collagen. So people ask me all the time, what supplements do I take? Usually not a whole lot of them. Magnesium, creatine, collagen, protein powder, and I cycle a bunch of different things depending on what I need. But collagen is one that's a staple because I prioritize my gut health. So Bubs Collagen is unique because it's just grass-fed bovine collagen. There's nothing else added to it. No weird stuff, no hidden nasty stuff, just straight pure and simple and it mixes with water like that because it doesn't have added compounds to it nice thing is i know the owner of bubs very well sean and i go back a number of years i love what his mission is he named it bubs after his good friend glenn doherty who was also known as bub as his navy seal call sign he gave up his life so sean created this business in his honor so super cool just story not to mention as clean and pure of a product as you could really get. And they have these stick packs that makes it super easy to travel with. So I never leave home without at least a few stick packs of collagen. Cause when I travel, I get stressed. My gut layer probably gets compromised. I could only imagine. So collagen becomes even more important. So that link down below is for a special discount and a big thank you to Bubs. So the long story short is that nicotine acts on these nicotinic receptors. And these nicotinic receptors are, uh, namely nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, are really important because they mediate the effects of acetylcholine, which is, quite frankly, probably the most important neurotransmitter just for regular energy function within our body. I mean, adrenaline, acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, these are like the really important neurotransmitters. They're super important. So when nicotine helps us essentially produce more acetylcholine, it's helping us produce more energy and focus, plain and simple. But let's get into more detail than that. There was a study published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. This was a fascinating one because it looked at archers, which I think are just it's a great sort of sport to look at because it requires focus, it requires this cognitive function, requires a certain level of neuromuscular coordination. So it was a good one to look at. So they gave subjects either a two gram dose of nicotine or two grams of a placebo. Now, two grams, in my opinion, is decent. When I do use nicotine, which is not super often, I'll only use maybe a quarter to a half a milligram personally. They had them do two types of cognitive tests. They had them do what's called a rejection test. They had them do a GPT cognitive test. Bottom line is their scores improved 9% and 11% respectively in both tests compared to placebo. So we're not talking a small negligible, like dismissive like amount, right? This was a serious improvement in their overall like performance cognitively. But now let's look at a study published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. This one was interesting because it looked a little bit more at baseball players. And it was pretty fascinating as well. In this case, they took non-smoking baseball players. So they didn't have any like sort of level of tolerance with nicotine. And they gave them nicotine gum or placebo once again. Well, results were quite interesting here. They found once again, their cognitive function improved, their reaction time improved significantly, and their number of hits increased. So we're talking about a compound that directly translates into sort of cognitive and how it flows into the body, right? Acetylcholine is a perfect example of that. It's like you think clear, but then it also connects, right? Connects so you could hit a baseball. Okay, well, let's keep going and understanding what's happening here. When nicotine is consumed, acetylcholine is produced, plain and simple. But there's lots of different receptors that nicotine can act upon, okay? So it's like, it could go a lot of different directions depending on where you're going with it. So with this, let's look at a rodent model study to understand a bit more. 
This study was published in the journal Neuropsychopharmacology, and they gave rodents either 330 or 300 micrograms per kilogram of body weight. And across the board, in all doses, but especially in a dose-dependent fashion, the more nicotine they had, the quicker their reaction time, the better they performed in cognitive tests. But then what they did is they blocked out or knocked out a particular receptor. In this case, it was the alpha-7 N-acetylcholine R gene. They knocked this out. And when that receptor gene was knocked out, they had no effect from the nicotine at all. So what this tells us is that nicotine is acting on very specific sites that are ultimately allowing for the release of acetylcholine. So it's not as quote unquote dirty of a molecule as we may think. Like cigarettes, for example, those are dirty because you get tens, if not hundreds, of different compounds in cigarettes, okay? You've got very nasty things in there, not to mention you're smoking it. The nicotine is just a small part of it. As a matter of fact, the nicotine might be what makes it addictive, but isn't the actual benefit, so to speak, that people are lurking for. They're getting all kinds of benefits that are probably destroying them. But nicotine is addictive. It's not addictive in the sense where your body's going to crumble without it, but you're going to want it more and more and more. It's somewhat addictive in the way that caffeine's addictive, just a little bit more of a prolonged addiction quality to it. Now, in respect to memory, there's a study published in NeuroImage that looked at how memory was affected by nicotine, and it improved across all markers. But look at the image that's on the screen right now. I just want you to see how wild nicotine is. So when nicotine binds to, in this case, it's the N-acetylcholine R receptor, look at the downstream effect. Okay, you've got all kinds of proteins that are activated, all kinds of enzymatic functions that are turned on, and then you have all kinds of even neurotransmitter functions. So by binding to one receptor site, you have this cataclysm of different things that are going on, which explains, once again, why when you take nicotine, it's very directive. So if you took nicotine and you wanted to go sprint, it might help you sprint. If you took nicotine and you wanted to do high cognitive load work, it would help you there. If you wanted to be more even emotional, it might help you there. It, it seems very almost like it morphs. And that explains how people feel with it. When you ask them, they're like, oh, it just helps me do whatever it is I'm doing. Also explains why it would be quite physically addictive, right? You just almost feel as if you need it. And who knows what kind of cascade is happening once it binds to one receptor site. But here's where things get really fascinating. From a body fat perspective, it's one of the most fascinating compounds out there. Like, it helps with fat loss. Now, in rodents, in a study published in Neuropsychopharmacology, they found that when they gave them nicotine, that it would suppress their hunger and it would actually decrease their body fat. In fact, they prevented weight gain with overeating without any change of energy expenditure, in energy expenditure. And they also were able to lose 12% body fat in those that they weren't overfeeding. So they lost fat without any change in energy expenditure. Why? Because it controlled their appetite significantly more. One of the most interesting things though, is that it changed their respiratory exchange rate or ratio. So in this case, what it means is that they were able to utilize more fat as a fuel source and they did not lose any lean body mass. So they ate less, lost 12% body fat, or 12% of their total body fat, but didn't lose lean body mass because it changed their rate of fatty acid oxidation. There was also no change in energy expenditure, remember. So they didn't exercise more, they didn't move more. But what's interesting is that fat loss continued for hours after nicotine consumption, even though the half-life of nicotine is less than an hour. So the fat loss continued on and on and on. Now remember, half-life doesn't mean that the, the compound is done. Half-life means that it, it kind of has a half-life thereafter, right? So if it's at an hour, it goes from two milligrams to one milligram, then in another hour, it's gonna go to a half a milligram, right? It just kind of descends like that. But what researchers have found is something interesting. They found that you only need a ridiculously low dose to actually instigate the fat loss effect. So that is why even once the main peak has gone down, the little bits of nicotine that continue to live, live on still trigger more fat loss. So the cool thing is, is you don't need constant stimulation from the nicotine. As a matter of fact, there's even some evidence that suggests that what nicotine turns into, a compound called cotinine, that cotinine can trigger fat loss, but more research needs to be done there. So we have those alpha-7 nicotine acetylcholine receptors in our white adipose tissue. So when nicotine binds to those receptors in our white adipose tissue, it triggers lipolysis. It's actually triggering fat to be used for fuel in those sites at that area in the white adipose tissue itself. So it's liberating fat from the fat tissue directly. 
And again, you only need low levels of nicotine. So once you've had that peak of nicotine, it still continues to aid in fat loss. And this is, again, going to happen independent of exercise. That probably explains why smokers are oftentimes very skinny, right? Nicotine has this effect. Again, it sounds almost too good to be true, so we'll talk about some of the negatives in just a second. But when we talk about energy and actual sports performance, there was a study published in Sports Medicine Open. This was an interesting one. They found that the rates of peak power and overall just time to exhaustion improved really a lot with nicotine, right? So not a surprise. We would expect that it would have a big impact on us just given all the other stuff. But what we're starting to potentially understand is that there could be an effect on nicotine and the acid base balance. So in anaerobic work where you're really pushing it, it might actually alkalize the body and buffer some of the lactic acid, or in this case, the lactate, or some of the hydrogen ions, this increase in sort of acidic environment. What's interesting is they found within minutes of administering nicotine that there was sort of an alkaline shift. So this relative alkalosis indicates that nicotine is doing something to the acid base, but it's not flushed out if this could be the reason why there's a, an increase in time to exhaustion. It could just be more cerebral than anything. You're able to focus and get in the quote unquote zone a little bit better, which allows you to maybe just get more out of your workout and push it a little bit harder. Last thing we need to talk side effects. This is very legit. We need to cover it. It is highly addictive. Okay. As far as safety and efficacy, there's not a lot out there suggesting that long-term nicotine in low to moderate doses is dangerous. Now, dangerous is a loose term. Dangerous could mean a lot of things, right? But one thing that we do have to look at that's very real is the effect on the metabolic health of whoever's using it. There was a study published in Circulation that found there is an increased risk of hyperinsulinemia with nicotine. Now, there's some mechanisms behind it that we potentially understand, and it could be the fact that it's acting upon these receptors, and even from a neurotransmitter level, is impacting our ability to allow insulin to bind. But there's even potential for a cardiovascular risk, right? Point is, is with the use of nicotine, I think there comes great responsibility. Again, I will use a low dose of nicotine now and then, but it's not something I use every day. It's something I use when I'm working out extra hard and I want that extra like little benefit, it's something I might use when I'm fasting because it could help me out there, right? So it's not something that I suggest people just go out and take without really doing research. But what I do want to really stand on a high horse and say is that it is not the same as cigarettes. As a matter of fact, I can think of a lot of supplements on the market today that are probably more dangerous than nicotine. But if you are dealing with metabolic health issues, you may want to monitor your insulin a little bit before trying nicotine in any form. I'll see you tomorrow.